Welcome to our webcast, uh, Bitwarden and Passkeys today. My name is Ryan. I'm joined today by some folks. I think I have them set up in a wing here on Crowdcast, so I don't know if you can see them, but I believe you can hear them. Uh, we have Anders, Micah, Brad, and Gary from Bitwarden all here to answer your questions about Passkeys. All right. So uh, we'll just go ahead and get started. So as, as many of you know, uh, the security community has been preparing to launch passkeys and this journey of passkeys for years. And now we are all exploring this new frontier together. And this includes tech giants like Apple and Google and then passkey providers like Bitwarden. We're all working together in this sort of alliance to explore the unknown. And it's appropriately called the FIDO Alliance and, and other groups to help chart the uncharted and bring passwordless security to everyone. So it's an exciting time, and I thank you all for being here with us. So here's our agenda for today. We're going to go over some passkey basics for some folks who um, who maybe uh, aren't as familiar with them. And then we're going to talk about Bitwarden's philosophy on passkeys. And then we're going to go into how passkeys can actually be used in Bitwarden, including the four uh, different methods for that. And then we also have a discussion on industry cooperation, and we're going to open it up to Q&A as well. So before we get started, I want to say uh, thank you, everybody, for your input, feedback, and participation. Uh, we announced and launched <clears throat> passkeys in Bitwarden um, in your vault. Uh, last week, at the very end of last week, and we made the announcement at the beginning of this week. And many of you have already provided some excellent, great input on our community forums on Reddit. And with your help, we will define the experience of passkey management and create the best solution possible. So thank you so much to everybody in the community who's, who's participated and uh, given us feedback. And just to start everything off, just got to say, like, we are committed to passkeys. Bitwarden is absolutely committed to passkeys. What you see now is just the start of what we're working on, and there is a lot more to come. All right. So I know there's been a couple of questions already in chat, and I think some of them have been answered already. Um, is there anything specific before we move on to um, how passkeys work? I think we've covered the um, the chat, uh, Ryan, but thanks, folks, for chiming in there. Please continue to do so. Yes, excellent. Yeah, please, yeah, just go ahead and bring your bring your comments into chat, and, and we're here to, to answer those questions. So now I'm just going to give a quick review of passkeys. Uh, a passkey is made up of two parts. They're actually two different keys. Uh, keys are very long, random strings of characters. Um, and in this case, for a passkey, there is a private key and a public key. And the private key gets kept in your passkey vault, and the public key gets kept on the website that you're trying to log into. The important thing is that these two keys are cryptographically linked. Um, and so what that means is that um, messages that are encrypted by one of the keys can be decrypted by the other. And this lets us do some really clever things for authentication. Um, what's also important is that the way that they um, communicate back and forth, the website and then whatever is providing your passkey, the passkey provider, uh, is set up in such a way that the passkey never leaves your device um, during the authentication process, and therefore it just can't accidentally be entered into websites um, that are fake websites. You can't copy and paste it somewhere it's not supposed to be. Um, and the, because it is in two different parts, Pass keys are way more secure than passwords because if there is a data breach on the website and your public key gets out, well, I mean, it's called the public key for a reason. It's okay if that's out there so long as your private key still stays secure um, on your device. So this is going to be significantly more secure than passwords and also a lot easier for users. And so... Let's go over how a passkey can log you in. Um, so this this uh, is based on the assumption you have one set up already. So what happens is you visit a website that's got the passkey set up to log in. And the website will respond to you with a very large random number um, called the login challenge. Um, and then you will use, you will activate, you'll open up your passkey vault either through biometrics or pin to unlock the private key that you have stored there. The private key will create a cryptographic signature based on that random number, that login challenge that was sent over, and then it will send that that um, that signature to the website. The website will then use the public key that it has to decrypt it, 
and if what is if what is listed is what is expected if the if the data is there is what the website expected then it can go ahead and assume that you are a legitimate user and will automatically just log you in and as i said before the really neat part about this is that there's no exchange of passwords it's not a shared secret um, so it is uh, in this process much more secure and with uh, synced pass keys, um, which are which is uh, the software pass keys that uh, Bitwarden supports, uh, you can use password managers like like Bitwarden uh, as a passkey provider to secure to have these your private keys synced across devices, so you can use them on any device. All right, any questions about how pass keys work here? I do have some some big guns of knowledge uh, in the wing here to help. I think we've covered the chat, uh, Ryan. So we should we can keep going. All right. So let's let's talk a little bit more about uh, pass keys developments and and what's happening in the industry. So if you really think about it, there are um, everybody is innovating in the space, and everybody has different ideas on the best way to implement pass keys. And we have uh, basically three different groups here. We have the industry standards that are shepherded by the FIDO Alliance and the W3C groups. We'll talk a little bit more later. Um, they are basically helping us uh, chart this. Uh, they're, they're providing the, the, the navigation chart for going through this unexplored territory. And uh, pardon. Uh. <laughs> And then we have the passkey providers. These are, these are the people doing the real, real world implementations. Uh, these are the websites, passkey providers like Bitwarden, um, the other passkey providers such as Apple and Google, and all the other different groups. And sometimes <clears throat> it's found that when boots are on the ground, um, or I guess like in, in our space metaphor, when the rocket fuels in the atmosphere, um, uh, there, w there are other ways to improve pass keys um, that, that aren't part of the standards yet. And so the providers and websites are implementing their own solutions <clears throat> and take feedback back to, the, uh, back to the group to help update the industry standards. Ryan, we've got a bunch of questions. I might uh, ask Micah and Anders to take a couple. Um, Anders and Micah, do either of you uh, know an answer to the question, how will a pass key work if a website decides to change their domain name? Yeah, so I can speak a little bit about this since I'm also part of the W3C and, and the FIDO Alliance and work on these standards. So uh, by default and currently, path keys are bound to a single domain. So uh, currently, you can move those path keys to work on a different domain. However, in the upcoming version of the specification, uh, there are solutions to handle multiple different domains. And this is not only if you just change domains, but also you know, relevant for companies that might use multiple domains. So there is a upcoming standard uh, to solve that situation. Great. And the questions are coming in like wildfire. I'll try to grab a couple quickly. Um, is Bitwarden working on standardizing import export? Absolutely. Anders is there. We could have a whole uh, session on that. Um, so that's great. Uh, will there be an option to log into the Bitwarden vault itself with a passkey? Absolutely. Stay tuned. That is coming. Uh, there was a second question there about um, could you log in with multiple passkeys? I might defer to Micah if he has an answer to that question. Uh, the answer to that is yes. Uh, so, you know, if you have multiple pass keys, they can all be used to log into the same account. Great. And they can be stored in different authenticators. Great. Uh, there was another question about how is the private key material stored? Uh, this must vary depending on the platform. Anders or Micah? Oh, yeah, sure. I can grab that. So looks like Micah grabbed it in, in, sorry. in the chat there. It looks like Micah already grabbed that one in the chat there. Oh, I missed that. Perfect. Yeah, thank you. Um, what else did we miss? Um, I have passkey for Google, but I log in for devices, including iPad. It seems I have to create a passkey on each device, correct? How does this happen with uh, Bitwarden in terms of synced passkeys, Anders? Sorry, Gary, can you repeat that? I read another question. There's so many great questions coming in. I know, I know. Yeah. I can take that one, Gary. Please. So, yeah, so um, with Google, they often are asking you to save a unique passkey on each Chrome uh, browser that you're using. And so that's why you're proliferating pass keys. 
With Bitwarden, because we're able to securely encrypt them and sync them between your devices, you only need to register a single passkey in Bitwarden, and it's available everywhere you use Bitwarden. Great. Um, let, let's take this uh, one from Brian. I know there's more, but I want to make sure we have a chance to cover some of the material. We'll turn it back to Ryan. Uh, last one was, can we assert requirements for the local storage? For example, is it possible to require secure enclave persistence? Um, or can Bitwarden use a, a FIDO key as storage? That was in the chat. Yeah, so that is a advanced question. Um, there are, we're, we're looking as the kind of, as the standard evolves to also allow a sync passkey combined with a device bound passkey. We are definitely looking to support that, but that is not standardized yet. And we would rely on certain hardware features and maybe also operating system features, but definitely something we're, Looking forward to support. Yeah. I see a lot of questions here that are kind of jumping the gun here uh, for our presentation. We have a lot to get through, and I'd love to walk everybody through it. Um, just to, to finish up this slide here as we go ahead, um, I also want to talk about user expectations, and that is end users uh, have been hearing about pass keys for a very long time, and everybody has expectations on how they think it should work. And the users uh, share the same dream that all of us do of a passwordless utopia that everybody, you know, as, as part of passkeys has, uh, but the users might not be aware of some of the obstacles right now to achieve that. One of those that we just talked about was the industry standards. Um, so while they are different, uh, the, these three different groups, like all have, um, are all uh, charting their own paths, they are converging as we are working together to achieve the same vision. So let's talk about Bitwarden's passkey guiding principles. Uh, so firstly, we, you know, we're a security company. We maintain a security centric approach and then we balance convenience into it. And everybody in security knows that there is a little bit of a spectrum between security and convenience. Um, and fortunately for pass keys, that, that spectrum uh, is collapsed. So it's, uh, it's much more convenient with pass keys, but the way it's implemented also requires a lot of really, um, really well thought out processes, which our team has worked on for quite some time um, to, to develop. Additionally, align, we, Bitwarden, uh, our goal is to align with and help shepherd industry standards. And actually, Anders, I'm going to uh, ha have you come in and help us uh, explain a little bit about the FIDO Alliance, the W3C, and also kind of what we're doing there and, and who we're talking to. Right. Yeah. So uh, passkeys does not happen in a vacuum, right? So passkeys were kind of uh, started out within a industry collaboration uh, organization called the FIDO Alliance that owns some of the specifications, but it's also a open specification, right? So in the W3C, uh, that is kind of leading all the specifications for browsers. So um, we're part of both organizations and we uh, engage with them and, you know, help bring the standards forward and also make sure that uh, our users can benefit the most from passkeys. Thank you. Uh, Bitwarden also, I guess uh, we really are, uh, one of our goals is to drive improvements for synced passkeys and that could include um, the industry standards we talked about or also just um, Bitwarden itself. And we want to have best in class user experiences for passkeys and the Bitwarden community has been, been fantastic so far early on with giving us feedback um, and we're going to continue to iterate. So let's talk about using passkeys in Bitwarden. So this, this part's exciting because there are four current and planned ways that you can use passkeys in Bitwarden already. And something that is important to us at Bitwarden is that we have it, um, all of these features are available to every account, even free accounts, because we believe that this technology should be available to everyone. And so starting up here in the top left, uh, you could use uh, pass keys as multi-factor authentication, 2FA also called, two-step login as well um, for all the, the different synonyms. And then we also have using pass keys, which is what we just announced uh, just early this week. That is being able to create and save pass keys into your vault. We have passwordless.dev, uh, with which uh, is Anders' uh, baby here, uh, for bringing uh, pass keys into your websites. Uh, that you can use to help your, your users authenticate with passkeys. And then coming soon is logging into Bitwarden with a passkey, um, which requires some really, really clever programming and some new technology to implement. And we'll talk about that. 
So first, I want to talk about Passkey two-step login. Uh, this is one we had just announced a couple weeks ago that we are bringing free to everyone. It used to be a premium feature only, but now anybody can use a Passkey for two-step login into Bitwarden. And a really super simplified, not technical chart here of what your experience looks like is you use your username and password to log in. You then are prompted for and put in your FIDO2 WebAuthn 2FA, also called a passkey now, and then you're logged into Bitwarden. Hooray. Um, to find it, you just go to your Bitwarden account in the web app. Uh, you go to your account settings, security, and then the two-step login tab. And it's listed here as WebAuthn, FIDO2 WebAuthn. That, is the, that was what passkeys were called before they were passkeys. Um, so um, nomenclature thing there, but that, that's, that's what it is, is a passkey. And there's two different types of passkeys that you could use for this. You could have your FIDO2 hardware security key. Um, this is called device bound pass keys. These are, these are specific to a device. Um, additionally, modern operating systems can generate uh, uh, pass keys and store them on secure hardware, um, like TPM chips, for example. That's one way that you can use uh, this for 2FA. And then otherwise, you could also use uh, a synchronized pass key, which is the software pass keys from a pass key provider that can also be used for 2FA. So basically, any type of pass key that fits the pass key standard can be used for two factor authentication. Now, our, our new feature, storing passkeys in Bitwarden, uh, where you can store passkeys and sync across your Bitwarden vault. Um, here's our, again, simplified diagram. You are logged into Bitwarden. You have a bunch of passkeys, one for each site that you log into. Super simple, super easy. Uh, we, we, we're so happy to, to have gotten this out. Uh, it, we, we, we've taken a lot of, a lot of thought and, and the hard work behind it. And we had launched it, uh, late last week. We had, we put a, a launch out, um, some, some users, uh, who were, uh, monitoring our GitHub, uh, took advantage of some early builds and, uh, we got some through the store and, uh, gave us some good feedback right away on the forums, uh, before we made our announcement on Tuesday. Uh, but we, this is just the start for us. We began, we're beginning with the browser extension. There is a lot more planned, including mobile and desktop applications. Um, our, our founder, Kyle on, on Reddit actually talked about the mobile application and what it, what the feature is for that and how we're going to implement pass keys. So a really good write up there. And then also, uh, import and export. Uh, that's planned as you know, we just talked about with the, with the standards, uh, waiting for those to be ready. And we are rapidly rolling out iterations. So uh, I think we're already up to 2013.10.2, uh, which is our, our latest version that is making its way to all of the uh, extension stores right now, Chrome, Firefox, um, um, Edge. And we want to really thank the community for helping bring some of the issues uh, that we've had to light. And as part of these iterations, we've made some, some pretty quick improvements to flow. So now when uh, you're going to a website that's got the pass key, uh, you can opt out of having uh, that site uh, have, have Bitwarden look for pass keys. If there are no pass keys detected or your pass key window gets closed, it'll fall back to the default system um, that you had before through the browser. And then we've also made some adjustments for um, some site specific things. So um, some websites were looking for specific attributes um, that um, wasn't part of the standard. So uh, we've made those adjustments. And so uh, thank you again to the community for, for bringing up these and making suggestions and we'll let you know we are listening and uh participating and all that too so thank you okay and i have a demonstration uh i'm going to invite up to the stage brad uh brad is brad on our on. team let's see if i can find brad uh, while you do that ryan will just jump in with a few questions uh eric had asked uh does Bitwarden support having multiple accounts on the same service using obviously a different pass key for each? Uh, Micah, you want to grab that? Yes. Uh, you can save one pass key to each login item you have in Bitwarden. So if you have two different login items, you can save a pass key for each of them. Great. Thanks. And Brian, regarding your uh, comment on the, the Mac app, their desktop app, there's lots of improvements. Um, planned across all the client applications. So an ongoing effort there. Um, back to you, Ryan. All right, 
Brad is here. Um, you can go ahead and take the screen. I am going to uh, wrangle all the windows so that your demo stays front and center. Looks good. Perfect. All right. Yeah. So I just wanted to do a quick little demonstration of storing and retrieving pass keys in Bitwarden and uh, falling back to YubiKeys as well. So I'm logged in here on the YubiCode demo site and I've got my Bitwarden extension installed. And I'm just going to go ahead and create a passwordless uh, passkey for my account. So you'll see here it's automatically pulled up the three different logins that I have for this website. If for some reason my URI is wrong or it doesn't show up, I can just go ahead and search my vault, pull up any other passkey and select it. Also, if it's a new site and I don't have a login item for it, I can go ahead and just click on the plus and create an item on the fly. Um, but for now, I'm just going to go ahead and save this to the one that I already have. And we're good to go. I'll rename this Bitwarden. And I'm going to go ahead and add a second key, but this time I'm going to add it to my security key. So the extension has seen that I already have a pass key for this application. Now, with the new release, I can just close the window and it'll automatically fall back. And perfect. So now I have two pass keys on this account, one in Bitwarden, one on my YubiKey. I'm going to go ahead and sign out. And we'll just go ahead and sign right in with the Bitwarden passkey, just like that. Um, a recent improvement here that I'm just going to go ahead and show is if I go ahead and remove this passkey from Bitwarden, and I'm going to go ahead and delete it from my vault. When I click on sign out and I go to sign in, we detect that we don't have a pass key and we immediately just fall back. So all you have to do is tap on that security key and you're good to go. Um, one more improvement that was mentioned there involves how we handle uh, excluded domains with pass keys. So if I just come in here and add this, as an excluded domain and refresh the page to get that. Now, whenever I go to add a pass key, it's just going to automatically fall back to pass keys or to the YubiKey security key. And yeah, that's about it. Thanks, Brad. Um, I see that we had a couple of questions roll in on this. Um, we had, uh, Micah, this is, might be for you. Is a passkey authentication and authorization at the same time, is it considered a factor I have or a factor I know? Uh, a passkey would be considered a factor you have um, when user verification is required um, and the user is like prompted to input uh, PIN or biometrics or something like that. That would be something you know or something you are. Um, and we are working to add that user interaction so that um, Bitwarden is providing that user to, the user verification and, and making it two-factor. Passkeys also do not expire, Marcus. As far as I know, I suppose a service could implement a like expiration and just delete the public key they have, but that would be kind of rough. All right, actually, Micah, I'm gonna let you continue to have the floor as we talk about logging into Bitwarden with passkeys. Let me just look at our super simple diagram here. You are logging into Bitwarden, you present your passkey, and you're logged in. Awesome. Uh, Micah, go ahead and take it away. Sure. So we're really excited about this feature. Um, we've been developing it for a little bit now, and it will be coming soon. Um, what we are planning on, on releasing initially is, is more so a proof of concept for how an end-to-end -end encrypted application can use passkeys for both authentication and encryption. Um, so you could register a passkey on a capable browser and then use that passkey to both log into and decrypt your Bitwarden vault. And this is, you know, pretty cutting edge for, for WebAuthn spec. Um, the PRF extension is brand new. And as far as I know, nobody's implemented it in this way. Um, so we're pretty excited about it. You're also going to be able to do this initially just on the web app. Um, and this is because that PRF support only exists in the web at the moment. Um, so we want to make sure you know, we're uh, able to support actual decryption um, and not just have you 
authenticate with a passkey and then need to use your master password to decrypt. Um, but you know, other clients, as PRF support becomes available on those platforms, um, we're going to be rolling out this experience as well. Thanks, Micah. Any questions about this? Anyone? What is PRF? PRF is pseudo random function. It is a new extension to the web Authent spec. Is that right, Anders? Anders, would you like to uh, comment on the wonderful topic of attestation? There's been a couple of uh, comments and questions there. Also a question in the um, Q&A about uh, revocation. Um, if a passkey is compromised at a, a service, how, how might one handle that? Right, yeah. So um, on the attestation topic, which is a highly advanced topic, I want to kind of set guardrails here that I will try to uh, stay in the shallow part of the water. So uh, attestation is currently quite hard when you're a software authenticator. That is because we need to rely on um, functions of the operating systems. So on certain platforms, we will be able to provide attestation um, and some others like that support will be coming later when that operating system has added support. Uh, I do want to like mention that attestation is a more of an enterprise feature. Most websites would never need attestation. Uh, so I just want to be clear on that. Um, and for revocation, so um, what was the question? Is is it if the pass key is kind of compromised, how the service will protect against that? So what the service would do is to block that public key. Um, and that would stop um, usage of that passkey for that website. But it would be on the uh, website's responsibilities. And you, of course, you as a user could log into a website and remove that passkey um, yourself. Great. Thanks, Looks like Anders. we have a question here from just the number nine, which is really cool uh, counting number popping up in the Bitwarden chat. That's great um, around how encryption works. So uh, with the PRF uh, capable passkey, what is essentially happening is um, each passkey is being used to encrypt the user's encryption key. Uh, and then when the server sends down the encrypted key, the passkey can decrypt it and then use that to decrypt the vault. So it maintains zero knowledge in this way. Uh, we have a question too here from AB, um, going alphanumeric still. If I lose the UB key, wouldn't someone be able to log into my Bitwarden when Bitwarden will support to log in with pass keys, unless an additional MFA is added besides the pin for the UB key? Well, uh, so this is why it is important. We we are requiring user verification for pass keys um, to authenticate to Bitwarden, so you would need to use that pin. Um, but yeah, this is a this is a a risk for hardware. Uh, authenticators, if you can lose them and then they can be used. That uh, ties in with um, a question in the Q&A section from Maxim, uh, how would I recover if I lost all my devices? So uh, for anybody who's been in the identity space for a while, you all know that identity is easy and recovery is much, much harder. Um, but uh, Micah or Anders, I don't know if you have a specific comment to losing all my pass keys. Well, so, yeah, Mike, I go ahead. So for the Bitwarden application, I think this is, this is a, right now, the answer is you have a master password that you know and that you have written down somewhere. Um, but as we work toward a future where there's a Bitwarden account that doesn't have a master password, um, we're, we're trying to think through how to solve this problem creatively um, and in ways that ensure you know, user recoverability. That includes registering multiple pass keys. Um, that includes maybe developing recovery modes so that you have something written down like a master password, but not used for authentication that lets you um, recover your vault in the event that you've lost all your pass keys. So definitely a problem we are working to solve. Yeah, and I, I also want to highlight that that is one of the benefits of using a service like Bitwarden to store your pass keys, that if you have a physical security key, um, and they are they are used in high insurance situations. They have benefits, but they for most users, it's also a huge risk that if you lose that 
you know physical key you lost all your pass keys they will not be backed up while in bitwarden you will have that kind of cloud sync and backup uh, end to end encrypted all right we're gonna we have a we have a q a section at the end of the document um so we're gonna revisit some questions there uh, but I'm going to uh, talk to Anders's child here, which is passwordless.dev, and that is building pass keys for your website or application. I have another super simple diagram. You have a website uh, that you have put passwordless.dev into, you publish it to the internet, and your site is able to create a pass key for every user to use. Um, simple and done. And now, Anders, uh, I'm going to give you the floor. Thank you very much. And I, I think I would like to connect back to what we said in the beginning, right? So passkeys kind of require a collaborative effort, both from uh, operating systems, from passkey providers, such as Bitwarden, but also website creators. So, and this is, could be for large companies, and this also for like all these small websites um, that are being, being built. And with Bitwarden, the, the passkey provider, we're able to help users store passkeys with passwordless.dev, we're helping developers build passkeys into their own web apps. So if you are a developer or if you work at a company where you have a um, development team, this service, passwordless.dev or Bitwarden uh, passwordless.dev is for them. So um, it's passkeys can be hard quite technically to build if you're a developer. Uh, Passwordless.dev is a service that makes it really, really fast. Uh, I cannot overstate this enough. I think the record to going into production from sign up is 90 minutes. So if anyone is able to beat that, please ping me. But uh, Passwordless.dev really gives software developers a, a great tool to add passkeys to their existing apps. And this could be, you know, for it could be a, a web app for internal users such as the employees at your company, uh, or it could be for external users, if, you know, customers, um, a forum, et cetera. I think we can jump to the next slide. So I um, also want to stress that passkeys and passwords.dev allow you to either use uh, passkeys as the first and only sign-in method, um, you don't need to, you know, if you're building a new website, you could go with passkeys only. Um, but I think it's equally important to consider it as just an alternative to your existing method. So if you have username and passwords today um, and you want to experiment with passkeys, using passwords.dev for that is excellent. Um, we also see customers who use it as a second factor uh, before they kind of uh, before they, you know, are ready to remove their first factor of authentication. Another very interesting um, way to use passkeys and really use the power of biometrics is to use what is called uh, a step up or critical step authentication. So imagine you're in your um, in your uh, application and you want to export a lot of customer data. Uh, you're already signed in with SSO, for example, but uh, to do this critical action to export data or, or remove data, we want to do an extra verification. Uh, and here, passkeys and using passwords.dev, it would be trivial to do a quick biometric scan to make sure that the user is indeed in front of the computer before that action is allowed. Um, and because of how fast passkeys are, it's, it's easy. It doesn't get too much in the user's way compared to re-entering a password, et cetera. So um, for all the kind of coders and programmers listening, password, passwordless.dev really works great for both new and existing projects. I would, I would really uh, recommend you to sign up and try it out. Uh, we've really done our best to make the passkey uh, API very simple and fast and a joy to use. So yeah, as, um, um, yeah, yeah, and to kind of prove that point, this is um, like this is the amount of code you need to add client side to to use a passkey when you're using passwordless dev. So, if you're a programmer, you, know, you add this piece of JavaScript, get the client, you call one method passwordless.signin, and that's all you need to do. We take care of the rest, and you'll get a token to sign your users in. 
So uh, um, yeah, but I imagine not everyone on this stream are developers, but you know, if you have programmer friends, please um, tell them about passkeys. Um, tell them you know, that passlist.dev is a great way to learn how to build passkeys to their existing apps. It might be uh, a personal project. We um, endorse those. We have a very generous free tier so that you can easily get started, you know, try it out on your weekend, and then use that on your um, workplace if you, if you think we built something good. Thank you so much, Anders. Uh, lots of questions. I can, I can grab a couple uh, while you digest, um, uh, Ryan. First one, uh, Eric had asked, what if passwordless.dev goes away at some point? Um, we obviously get the same question about Bitwarden. Um, Bitwarden, as uh, most of you know, has an open source architecture. Uh, the software is available uh, to, to, to see on GitHub. Uh, we also offer an option uh, to self-host. And we think that those principles uh, provide the best kind of um, uh, assurance for customers um, long term should something happen. We obviously don't want anything to happen. Um, Anders, I don't know if you have any further comments there. No, I think that's a good point. So yeah, passlist.dev is open source on GitHub and um, and we do have self-hosting. So um, I think that, you know, that's the, the question if something goes away, that that's always going to be present for kind of any service yeah. or supplier. And yeah. I think we do our best to, to relieve those uh, points. Yep. Uh, and then, uh, Anders, a question about are pass keys saved to passwordless.dev or to the developing company servers, or how does that work? Yeah, so we take care of all the storage. So, um, and remember, we, we don't store in passwordless.dev, we don't store the private key, we store the public key. Um, so we take care of all the storage for you. So if you run, you could run a kind of serverless or database-less app and still use passwordless.dev to do authentication. Great. Um, Balas has been asking lots of great questions. Uh, there was one uh, comment about uh, non-trivial risk uh, that users would shoot themselves in the foot by, by locking themselves out with some kind of circular situation. Um, we unfortunately have that situation today uh, oh, sometimes with uh, people who you know, only keep their Bitwarden password inside of Bitwarden, which is not a recommended configuration. We actually did a uh, presentation and a webcast. We called it the triangle of security success on how to keep your uh, password manager account credentials separate from your primary email credentials, separate from your two-factor authentication credentials. And, you know, that's a lot for some people. Um, so hopefully over time, the industry will, will um, find more ways to make the um, recovery paths work for um, users as well. Um, I can't. Uh, I saw a question on uh, passkey support for web apps. It's coming along nicely, but for logging into mobile apps, it's a bit hard to implement at the moment. Any help with passwords that there for that? Yeah, so that is a really good question. Um, we are actively building native uh, mobile SDKs. So if you are a Android developer or iOS developer, please reach out to uh, to us at Bitwarden. You can send a request through our normal support channels, and I will I will get them. I would love to work with you uh, to hear your case. Um, it's definitely possible. We haven't built the public SDKs, but you could like, the the code to do those things are are quite easy to write. So I'd be uh, very happy to connect with you if you want to build a, a mobile app and use passkeys. Great, Brian had asked about uh, some kind of. Um passkey support matrix and index. And I posted the uh, the passkey index that we have uh, in there. And I'm going to grab the uh, triangle presentation. Um, so I'll turn it to you, Ryan, to field any questions or move ahead. Yeah, I think we're actually going to move ahead. Uh, we're going to discuss and sort of wrap up our presentation here and then full on full on into Q&A. Um, so just want to say like this is a unified exploration. Uh, the entire industry, as Anders was saying, is working together and we need everybody to help tackle uh, exploring this vast new territory of security. So thank you for being a part of the community. Uh, as Anders said, just reach out for, um, for, for the SDK assistance and uh, just keep giving us feedback on our community forums and on Reddit. And uh, like we 
then just 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 work with us and we'll work with everyone and we work with the alliance um, and so everyone is cooperating on this and we're really excited about the future speaking of cooperation uh, we have a an index a passkeys index on github um, this is something that anybody here can contribute to uh, and submit a PR request. Um, I, I or Anders can approve it once it goes in, uh, but it's a list of, of, of websites that support pass keys right now. If there's something that we've missed, uh, please feel free to add it in and yeah, I'll, I'll get that approved and up. So um, there are other lists out there, um, but they're not as community sourced as they could be. So we want to have everybody in the community help us with that. And now we can turn it full over to Q&A. So I'm going to start digging through the Q&A uh, section here. I know we've already asked a lot of things. Uh, feel free to take any questions any of our experts here see as you go through. Uh, see here. So, there, so Offer had uh, uh, continued questions on the differences between uh, traditional hardware keys compared to pass keys. And I think this could be a whole, this could be a whole uh, session uh, in and of itself. And I'll, I'll just comment very broadly at the high level and then leave it to Micah and um, uh, Andrew to add more. So it used to be a long time ago that the hardware security key uh, was, was the, the main way that people would do this extra layer of sort of very um, uh, protected security because that was it. It was just on that key, you had it, or maybe you had two to keep yourself uh, safe. As that uh, the standards evolved, the idea of uh, a pass key broadened, uh, sort of it was born as this idea of a software enabled thing, but then brought to encompass all security keys. And so from an industry perspective, there has been a little bit of overlap of the language there, which might be um, where, where, where some of the questions are coming from. Um, but again, the uh, main difference is it, uh, traditionally the hardware key was a set um, code that you could activate uh, by having that device with you, whereas pass keys are a specific user and service code generated via software to be unique to that exchange. Um, so that's sort of the, the, the high level and the way I think about it. But uh, Micah, Anders, anything that you want to chime in there? Yeah, sure. I can I can add on. So. In the really getting into the techno like the techniques and and the weeds here, um, so FIDO two is uh, like the the standard name is backwards compatible to something that's called U two F, which is a kind of older security keys and UV keys. So uh, FIDO two and passkeys build upon that proven technology. However, U two F was designed to be a multi factor or second factor uh, authentication. Pass keys are built to replace passwords. So, um, really, in essence, um, without doing this like a thirty-minute presentation, in essence, I think the main difference in, in you know day to day is that pass keys are syncable, and that they are discoverable. So that means that you don't need to do a first authentication to discover the identity of the user. Um, so, um, in short, uh, but very technical. Pass keys are syncable and discoverable. U to F uh, security keys cannot provide those values. Thanks, Anders. I saw a question that was already answered, but I want to I like to pull it up again. Um, will pass keys replace password managers? Uh, well, I. I like to show like, well, first passwords will be around for, for a while. Um, it, they probably won't ever go away, maybe in our lifetimes um, in some sites. But as you can see, uh, a lot of password managers out there right now are beginning to support pass keys and will uh, basically become pass key managers uh, primarily in the future. Uh, so the, us here at Bitwarden, we don't, we don't see anything going away. Password managers aren't going away. Uh, we think that there's a lot of a lot of value in providing pass keys that can sync across all devices and all platforms, and not get locked into a specific ecosystem, uh, which is, you know, kind of why the dedicated password managers exist in the first place. And so, uh, no, I, we, so it's going to be a very bright future still for password managers. Any other questions here that haven't been answered yet? I saw one that had made it to the top of the list. Like, what would happen if a website changes their domain? Uh, what happens to those pass keys then? 
Yeah, I, I think we addressed that uh, question that an upcoming addition to the specification would allow for multiple domains to be used for a single passkey. Got it. Sorry, I missed that earlier. Um, do we support sharing passkeys in Bitwarden? Yes. Uh, if you sh if you have if you have an item that's shared in a shared vault, you can share passkeys with uh, um, with other users in your organization. Um, I I don't know, uh, Micah. Are, are we looking at additional send features for passkeys or? Um, we're looking at additional item sharing features broadly. So uh, as passkeys are saved to login items, uh, I guess, yes, is the answer. Wonderful. And I've seen a couple comments here about release notes for bug fixes. If you want to find uh, m like more detailed release notes that we have. Uh, I've got that, first... Ryan. Oh, you got that already? OK, it came up that a link, second time yeah. here. Just posted it. Okay. Yep, we have it on GitHub and on our help site. Our help site has the has the major releases. Yeah, the GitHub link is the more de detailed uh, notes, uh, dot versions and such. Um, the bitwarden.com slash help will have the high level. All right, and we are we're actually over time, but um, I would like to go ahead and while everyone is here, invite everybody to our fourth annual open source security summit. Uh, this is Bitwarden's major event uh, that we have every year. Um, we have some really fantastic uh, speakers join us uh, every uh, every year. Uh, this year we have Rachel Toback, Zach Koss, and Brian Krebs. Uh, uh, so we have like white hat security hackers. We have folks from um, uh, OpenAI joining us. So yeah, every year the open source community comes together for this. Please. Uh, Take a look at our website, opensourcesecuritysummit.com. Register now. This is happening in December. You can also take a look at some of the stuff that happened earlier uh, with uh, with earlier uh, keynote speakers. Um, I think we we it was at our second one and our first one. We had uh, Wozniak join us. Uh, we had a um, couple other like really famous, uh, well known hackers as well. So yeah, uh, please join us and take a look. And I'd just like to say we've, we've gotten so many questions. We obviously we're going to have to do more uh, events that are specific to pass keys. So we'll see if we have time for another one this year. If not, you'll certainly see more uh, next year. And we are, are, are grateful for all of the input. You can also send questions to us on uh, Twitter. Um, we, you know, we can, we can collect input there. We won't be able to answer everything right away necessarily, but um, that's another, another place where you can reach out to us. All right. Well, thank you, everybody, for being a part of this. Uh, thank you, uh, community members, for your feedback. And thanks for all the questions, everyone. What a wonderfully engaged audience we've had today. I'm going to go ahead and play us out with some more, uh, I guess, somewhat space-themed music. And I'll stick around and chat to answer questions um, a little bit longer. So uh, thank you, everybody, for being a part of this.